Deixe o nome do Senhor. Nós saudamos a igreja. Bless be the name of the Lord. Let, uh, uh, greet the church with the peace of the Lord. Invite those who can to stand up. We're going to read the word of the Lord in Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Exodus, Exodus 3, 5. Amen. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Amen. Oh God, we ask that you speak with us. Apply your word in our hearts. So we, as we pray to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. The church may be seated. The book of Exodus, the word Exodus, speaks of a way out, of, of an exit. In the world, in, in Brazil, we used to do this, the rural Exodus. So, in other words, people were leaving the fields, the agriculture, and going towards the cities. So, Exodus means when the people is, is moving around from one place to another. And the Exodus here in the Bible, we're going to see exactly this when the people of God it leaves Egypt towards Canaan the promised land so Exodus here was a moment a historical moment but it was also a prophetic moment in the life of a people And everything there reg that was registered was just a shadow for, it was foreshadowing the future things so what happened there was not only a story that was registered but it was a history that was designed from eternity by God. It was a project in which these people was able to live, in which we today we are we are included in this product, in this project, this project that also speaks speaks about the faithful church that is leaving the world to live with the Lord in eternity. They lived a moment in which it was everything was physical, was material. And we live a moment today, a spiritual moment. Moments in which we are being able to being able to reach it through faith. And they were able to reach through sight. But we are able to achieve it. We're we're achieving this through faith. 
because the faith is the firm foundation of the things that we are not seeing but uh, are awaited for so we are also in a trajectory we are leaving the Egypt the slavery of Egypt the things that sometimes the world wants to cause us to be submissive to but the word here that, w that we just read speaks of a moment in which God chooses Moses in order for Moses to go to, in order for Moses to be used by God's hand in order to be the leader that was going to lead these people toward to the promised land so Moses he was a man that was a man that was prepared it was a man that it was a man that had preparation. He was born in Egypt. And it was a determination from one of the pharaohs to kill every children of the Hebrews that were born male. And the mother of Moses placed Moses inside of a basket. I believe that the children know this story very well. I'm not even going to give too many details because I may make a mistake and they will correct me here. But in summary, Moses, he was placed in the Nile River and he ended up where the daughter of, or Pharaoh where she was bathing she was bathing on the river and she saw that little basket floating and she was curious and she went there to her surprise she found a baby when she saw that baby today we see mothers abandoning their children uh, throwing them in garbage bag garbage baskets see to what point man has come people say that man has evolved i don't think so i don't believe it but this is a topic for another day but there the daughter of pharaoh saw that little child crying and she thought she said it's mine I'm going to pick up this child I'm going to raise it I'm going to adopt this child and she did she had adopted Moses and Moses grew up there in Egypt learning all the culture of Egypt Egypt was a country that was uh, well developed uh, at the time because of the science today we see in Egypt the pyramids and even a few engineers go there on, on trips to figure out how they made it today with all the technology it's easier but how about that time to build the pyramids Egypt was a country that was well developed for the time Egypt developed the technique the technique um, developed the process of bombing for the mummies to cause people to remain with their bodies to be to be uh, preserved and today sometimes uh, they are still finding mummies and uh, the science of the time ended up uh, developing in Egypt, in Egypt and Moses was trained 
and all the science of Egypt become, in order to become a successor of uh, Pharaoh. And the word says that when, came, uh, when he came at a certain age, in Hebrews is written, is in the book of Hebrews, is registered that he rejected everything. He rejected being called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. He rejected the entire inheritance that Pharaoh, that Egypt had for him. When he had the understanding, while he was a child, a youth, or adolescent, he was really excited with all of that, with Egypt. But when he realized that God had another project for him, that God had a project, a greater project for him, he goes and he abandons Egypt. He abandons Egypt in order to give worth to a call from the part of God of being a leader, the one who is going to lead the people of God to the promised land. But in order for this to happen, God had to prepare him. God could have said, look Moses, you're already a man, a, a man uh, filled with culture, a man that has already learned lots of things in Egypt, a man filled with human knowledge. But that's not how it works. Because God's logic is not the logic of this world. The things of God, they are not the things of this world. Apostle Paul said that God, He uses the, the crazy things in order to confuse the, the wise ones. Because for the wise man, it is foolishness to seek the Lord. The wise of this world, they think that we are a crazy people. And the ones who say this, are the Apostle Paul himself who says it. People is a crazy people. They say that there is a heaven. They keep talking about things. My brethren, Jesus says this. Jesus rejoiced. And he said, Father, I give you thanks because you he, your mysteries to the wise and the knowledgeable and re reveal them to your the, the, the meek ones. So all of the things that Moses had learned in Egypt for, for God, it was, it had no uh, value. We're not saying here that a youth, that we, should not obtain knowledge. Of course not. We're not speaking about that. But we are speaking, we are saying that the things of God cannot be understood through human reason. So, 
So God chooses Moses and tells him, Moses, I have a call for you, but I'm going to allow you to go, to go through new experiences, and that's exactly what happened there. And God speaks to Moses in the midst of the burning bush. When Moses became um, a shepherd, he went there to work with his father-in-law. He went there to work with sheep. See, God's wisdom. He told him to work with sheep because they're going to deal with the people that is similar to sheep. So he went there and they say there that the, the Bible says that they were in the desert, that he led his flock into the desert. And the angel appeared to him and he saw that the bush was a speci special type of vegetation in the desert. He said that this bush was burning, was on fire, but was not being consumed. So this was, he was amazed with that. Because God now will bring him to understand a new dimension. God is going to bring Moses to obtain experiences, wonderful experiences. To lead the people because Later on, he's going to see wonders, he's going to see the seas opening up, he's going to see things that he didn't see in Egypt. And that's what God wants to do with the church. The Lord has called us in order for us to see things, amazing things. The Lord has called us not to live in a life where nothing changes. But God has called us to hear His voice. And He says here in the Bible that Moses, he heard the voice of God saying, I am the God of your Father. Right? So God called us not us to live in a life of religion, religiousness, but to live a life of experiences with the Lord. Every day, and we are having another experience. One day, the manna is, is coming down. In the, in the day we're, in which we are in trial and afflictions, and we can't see the hand of the Lord with us. So then Moses there, he sees that miracle. And the Lord then says the following. And Moses was curious and he wanted to come close and he said, and the Lord said, do not come near here. And take uh, sandals from your feet because for the place where you stand is holy ground. So the Lord has called us to live in a holy land. At a certain point, There was there Mar Martin Luther, Martin Luther, the one who was the reformer of the Catholic Church, the 
Protestant Reformation. It is said that that he was in his own、uh, dwelling, praying, reading the Bible, and writing his theses. I believe it were ninety six ninety six theses that he wrote in order to place them at the door. Of the monastery, and one of the theses that he placed there was the following: that the just will live by faith. It was one of the theses that he was questioning. He was questioning the religious system of the time because the religious system of the time was based on. Human reason, and he did not agree with that. He said, that "The just will live by faith. He's not the just is not going to live by works, according to the religious system that was established there." And once he was inside of his room, and he saw on the on the wall of the, his bedroom, he saw the his opposite, the one that was opposed to him. He was writing a list of、um, the accuser, the enemy of our souls. He was writing several、um, of his mistakes, of his flaws, and. The devil told him, "Are you still going to write your thesis?" So, in other words, the enemy was trying to intimidate him in his bedroom. And is it is told that Luther answered, "I will continue because the blood of Jesus purifies me of all my sin." And that's how it was with Moses. Many rose up. Many things rose up against Moses, and it, and how it it has been with the church. Many things rise up against the church, but the church remains seeking the Lord. But there was an instruction to Moses. Moses. Take your sandals off your feet, because the for the place where you stand is holy ground. The sandals here speak of a human resource, a human resource. So God was there saying to Moses. That in that walk, from that point forward, he did not need any more human resources in order to walk, because God was going to provide all things to him. At the moment of of the cold. God provide provided a, a column of fire when they were walking the desert. During the day, when the sun was very harsh, God provided the cloud. So God wanted to say to Moses, in this walk, your in this new walk, you will not need your shoe, your sandals. You're not going to need the resources there are、um, coming from men, because all the things are going to be given from me to my people. When the thirst came, he went there and touched on the rock, and from the rock, from the rock came water. And is it is in the same way with the church, from faith to faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Take off your sandals. The Lord was showing here tonight to each one of us who came here. It was given. Uh, we, each one of us, we left our shoes at the door. And when we entered here, during the service, our feet were treated with oil. It was removed. The wounds were removed. They, uh, the, our wounds were treated. And all of us felt a relief. When our feet were treated in this way with oil, However, when we went back home, there was an angel there that would give us a new pair of shoes. Because when we came here, we may have come here with problems, with trials, difficulties at work, at home. But when we leave, we leave with a renewal. The wounds that you have been wounded with out there, the Lord has already healed. The tiredness of your feet, the Lord also has brought relief to you. He put oil on. And we are going to leave this place not in the same way we entered, but renewed by the Lord. With new shoes because every day that we are here in the house of the Lord there is a new promise which is renewed a new covenant new shoes so it was shown that a woman she was worried she was asking, where, where are my old shoes? I used to like it so much. I'm telling you, leave the things, the old things to the past. The Apostle Paul says the following, leaving the things that are left behind, I walk, continue walking towards the award of the sovereign vocation. I leave the things that are uh, behind uh, uh, behind me. There are people that have been dragging with problems. Hey, do you remember that word? No, I don't remember. You don't remember? Yes, you remember. There are people that like to remember things from from far back in the past. But the Lord wants to give you a new pair of shoes. My sister, leave your old shoes behind. Me, not only the sister, us. We should always, we should all leave our old shoes behind. What caused you discomfort? Why do you want to go back to this? Take the new shoes that the Lord has for us, for our lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it says, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. Remove every concern, everything that may bring discomfort to your life. Because the Lord wants a new life, a new walk. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hey, God bless us.
glórias a Deus. Com a palavra de glorificação ao nome do Senhor, porque nessa caminhada o Senhor tem nos dado toda a, a providência, né? A nuvem a no, durante o dia, a coluna de fogo, as cordonizes, né? O Senhor não tem deixado faltar nada. E o Senhor tem nos dado experiências maravilhosas com Ele. Uma glorificação ao nome do Senhor. Glória a Deus. Glorificar o teu santo nome, porque Deus, tua palavra, Senhor, é santa. Tua palavra vem, Senhor, para nos educar, para que possamos a cada dia entender mais dos teus mistérios. Por isso, Pai, estamos aqui para adorar e glorificar o nome do grande Deus, aquele que criou os céus e a terra e hoje está, Senhor, no trono de graça. Graças te damos, ó Deus, pelo teu Filho amado, Jesus, que nos dá, Senhor, a intercessão para que possamos estar diante de ti, de pé, fortalecidos, ó Deus. Graças te damos por tudo que tu tens feito, porque até aqui nada nos tem faltado. Glorificamos pelas bênçãos, Senhor, que tu tens nos dado, pela alegria, ó Deus, de estar na tua presença. Louvado seja o teu santo nome e nós adoramos assim agradecendo em nome de Jesus Amém, Amém. hoje nós fazemos parte da igreja do Senhor e o mesmo povo que o Senhor tirou do Egito naquela época e os levou a uma terra onde manava leite e mel. É o mesmo Deus que também nos tirou do mundo, do Egito. E está no, nos direcionando para a terra santa. Para as mansões celestiais. Jesus falou, eu vou e vou preparar-vos mansões celestiais. Então, o Senhor quer que nós caminhamos pela fé, com os pés descalços. Quando nós estamos na presença do Senhor, vamos des, des, né, tirar do nosso coração... Tudo aquilo que é próprio do homem, aquilo que impede a operação do Senhor em nossas vidas. Porque o Senhor, Ele quer nos levar a algo maior. Às vezes nós, homens limitados, queremos, pensamos em coisas pequenas, mas o Senhor... Ele tem coisas grandiosas para nós. Não coisas passageiras. Não, não estamos falando aqui de coisas grandiosas aqui nesse mundo. Mas estamos falando de coisas grandiosas que o Senhor tem na eternidade para cada um de nós. Porque nós sabemos que a vida aqui é curta. O mais importante é guardar a benção do Senhor. Né? As coisas grandiosas que Deus tem para nós. Amém. Senhor, nós louvamos, adoramos e bendizemos ao teu nome. Porque um dia o Senhor nos tirou do Egito e nos colocou, Senhor, nessa caminhada. Te louvamos, Senhor, porque até aqui não nos faltou e nem nos faltará coisas alguma. Porque o mais importante é a fé. Louvado seja o teu nome, Senhor. 
Continue conosco, nos abençoando na Tua presença, em nome do Senhor Jesus. Amém. Podemos sentar a todos. A paz. Um, peace to Lord, everyone. If for any reason you still desire a prayer, we are going to be here, ready to give you the appropriate assistance.